and hello everyone and welcome to another maintenance update and today we have some big news it is here it's finally here the thing that was leaked months ago the valkyria profile the valkyrie profile collaboration yes oh wait it's not on the global side whoops oh my goodness i'm probably going to get so many down votes for doing that but it's okay because it was kind of funny. That's that's basically my reasoning for it. So anyway, today we find out that we are getting a brand new raid, and it is the Valkyria Pro Valkyrie Profile. I'm, I'm thinking Valkyria Chronicles, which was a series I liked a lot more. But a lot of people are very excited for this, so I will not poo-poo on them. So, first of all, let's talk about the raid, which is the King Barbarossa raid. Yes, it's fun to say, and it's going to be probably pretty damn easy to beat. So, what do we get for doing it? Well, this time we have a hat, which has 10 defense and 50% light resistance, which, who cares? Eh, it's pretty meh, I guess, for magic tanks, but I think there's plenty of light resistance already in the game. A spear with 84 attack. It's a thing, I guess. And an accessory with 30% dark resistance. Be still my beating heart. Kind of whatever, kind of mediocre, nothing really that exciting. Looks like we have a couple of materials that may be in the raid pool. But in general, it's going to be a raid that a lot of people are probably going to be pretty excited about because Valkyrie Profile, kind of a Square Enix series that has been a little bit, um, not, uh, not particularly well overhyped of recently. So, let's talk a little bit about the news, and as you can see, I've got just kind of difficulty finding where all the news are. Okay, so, Valkyria Profile. This time we have five new units, because... Alan wants you to spend your damn lapis, and anyone who's a Valkyrie profile fan is probably going to go pretty nuts on this banner. So let's talk about it and see if these units are any good. So who are the units this time? Well, we have Leneth, we have Argrim, we have Freya, Lucian, and last, Jolanda. There they all are. Look at how pretty they are. Now, something you'll notice right away is three five-star base units. Yes, yes, everyone, please be afraid. Be very afraid, because these are all five-star units. Three of these are five-star units. They can go to seven-star units, all with super DMRs. So if you want to complete the collection, you're going to be spending a good amount of damn real-world money to get this, or you're going to be incredibly lucky, whichever happens first. So let's talk about Leneth, what we do know about her, and I'll talk about the banners in a minute. I know there's something about them. I'll get to it. So, 5-star Leneth. Of course she was going to be a 5-star. Her TMR is a sword, 135 attack with a dark element. Not bad, but honestly, I could care less. I'm Dark Element isn't particularly as big of a thing, necessarily, so... Yeah. Now, her Super TMR is a two-handed bow. 160 attack and 30% the spirit. This really makes me question her kit. And it means that her Super TMR cannot be equipped by her, and there, only, there really isn't many good bow users in the game. That would want this thing. Now it's two-handed, but eh? And 30 spirit? Okay. Just kind of a confusing TMR. And if she has her own T or super TMR. And if she has her own TMR equipped, she can't use her super TMR, so I don't know who this is for yet. So what's in her kit? Well, her limit burst does single target damage. She can do single target damage. She can do single target damage with magic and a spirit break. What percentage? We won't know till the data mine, so don't get too excited yet. She also has two T abilities, meaning she can use one of her sword and one of her bow skills. You can only use one specific ability in the same combo. So she can't double cast her own abilities, which means that they could be either incredibly strong. 
I don't know what they were thinking with this. We'll have to wait and see the actual numbers on these, but it's kind of weird. She has an AoE heal and she has guts. She also has a AoE damage and light and dark in peril in her 7 star kit, which... Unless it's an amazing light and dark in peril and does a lot of AoE damage, seems pretty meh. I don't know about Luneth, or Leneth. Luneth I know about, we know about his kit, but Leneth, I'm not super crazy on her kit. I really think, you know, she's the one of the units that any fan of the series is going to want, so she's probably a Lapis bait. She'll be good, I just don't think she's going to be anything that great, but I look forward to being proven wrong. Alright, next up is Freya. Now, Freya's accessory is a 55 stat magic accessory with an extra 20% MP. This I want. This I really, really want. This I want. And her super TMR is bananas. Uh, it is literally the bananas. Her super TMR is a hat with 40 defense, 50 magic and spirit, 30% to HP, and confuse and petrify immunity. I want this for CG Sakura. I don't know how good Freya is, but I really want everything that Freya has for CG Sakura. So, yeah, and Freya... Freya I like more than uh, Leneth, so I even like her sprite. The green and yellow is just very pleasing to the eye. She's cute. Uh, I could definitely go for this girl. Now, her limit burst is single target damage. We're going on a theme here, apparently. She can also do AoE damage, single target damage, and it's spirit break. AoE thunder damage and thunder imperil, which is important. We'll get to that in a second. And her T ability is can only use one specific ability in the same cast. So same as Leneth, seems like you can't... They have double cast for their abilities, but you can't double cast one ability. Like one specific ability. I don't know what to think of that. And her 7 star skill is listed as single target, big damage. Whatever that means. Probably some high statted attack, but will it be that good? Keep in mind that limited time units like this are usually sold on their limited time-ness, and not so much on how great they are. In normally like these units, they're good. I mean, any 7 star is great, but they're always lesser quality than the Brave Exvius units. Pretty much always. It's not bad. It's not great. And next we have Beefmaster himself. Sorry, I... What's his name? Argrim. Arngrim. Arngrim. Anyway. His, access, his TMR is an accessory 40 attack... 30% to light resistance and a physical, <clears throat> excuse me, evade and counter. Depends on the evade and counter percentage, but it seems pretty good. 40 attack on an accessory, it's basically Dash's accessory, just with more good stuff to it. And his super TMR is literally the thing I want the most from this raid. It is a two-handed greatsword, 165 attack, with the thunder element... We'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. And it ups limit burst damage. Forget Cloud, this thing was made for CG Hayu. This is the completing thing that CG Hayu needs. Really, really bad. 165 attack on a, on a two-handed greatsword is already nuts. And if you enhance it from the weapon raids, it's just even better because you can get a percentage on it. But the fact that it has a thunder element, which is what CGIU thrives on. Oh my god, with Ignis 2 at a max limit per 100% thunder resistance debuff. And limit burst damage up. Yeah, this is the thing. Argrim has me the most excited, but I don't want him for Argrim. I totally want him for CGIU. This is so good. Okay, so now getting back to it. What does Arnglim have? Well, he has a single target nuke, a single target nuke. Lots of single target stuff here. Fire in peril, fire in on one of his nukes. 
I'm guessing it puts fire on himself? Yeah. He also has a T ability, which, pretty much the same thing, can only use one specific ability in the same cast. Chance to counter physical attacks with a single target, fire in peril, fire in view, and a limit burst gauge add. Interesting. Depends on his limit burst, which now we can go back and talk about it. A single target fire damage ability with limit burst gauge added for the rest of the party except himself. Kind of a cool thing. He might do a lot of fire damage and give a lot of limit burst to everybody else. That's kind of cool. And his 7 star is... <laughs> God damn it, I hate this description. Single target, big damage. We'll let the data mine truly decide that. And next up is Lucian, whose TMR is a Materia percent attack and spirit up when equipped with swords. Depends on the percentage and his limit burst. Single target, thunder damage. Single tar In his kit, single target damage, consume HP and single target damage, and thunder in peril. And single target, thunder damage. I, The word of the day, the words of the day, are single target. And he has a combo, choose three different abilities to use in one turn. That's kind of cool. Triple cast, but he's still a four to six star, so we'll see. But maybe he'll be more interesting than I'm giving him credit for. And Jolanda, the last one that I have not scrolled down to yet. Eh, she's pretty cute. Her TMR is a 12 attack, 98 magic rod. I guess... A long time later, we finally get the power creep to, uh, not Lunith, what's his name? The FF3 character. His TMR was a rod. This one's slightly better, and it only took a year and change. Anyway, her AoE is fire, her limit burst is AoE fire damage. I mean, she learns many magic spells. Okay. Great, great. Super, she has fire, AoE, a single target damage with poison, single target damage with defense and spirit debuff, and an AoE attack buff. Yeah, Not even a good three star for TMR fodder, but there you go. And now we're going to talk a little bit about the banner rotation schedule, which for some reason Bluestacks doesn't want to scroll past this point, so you're just going to have to listen to my beautiful raspy voice because I've been talking a lot today. All right. So first of all, the banner schedule is as follows. Because there are three five-star bases, there will be three individual five-star banners at certain times, as well as a everyone banner at the end. So some notes. Rainbows from featured banners are Valkyria profile units only, meaning if you do get a rainbow on one of these banners, it is the Valkyria profile character. Valkyrie profile character. Hope someone's not doing a count of how many times I misspeak in this episode. Anyway, so if you get a rainbow, it's going to be a Valkyria pro Valkyrie profile character. Also, rainbow rates are likely to be 2% on the featured rainbow and 1% for the other two, 0.5%. So you can still on the featured banners when it's Lenneth's banner, for instance. So her banner goes from the 22nd of January to the 24th of January. You have the highest chance of getting Lenneth's, but you could still get a Freya or an Ongrim. Freya's banner goes from the 25th to the 27th, and Arngrim goes from the 28th to the 30th, and everyone gets a altogether banner on the 31st. But we have a little bit more details. There's going to be a step-up banner. Two step-up banners in a month? Has Alan lost it? No, they just know that they I think they finally figured out that step-up banners are a good way to get people to sink a lot of lapis quickly. And it is the same type of step-up banner as CG Citra, or CG Hayu, or CG Reagan. Basically, there will be a step-up banner, one of these step-up banners, for each of the specific unit banners. So there'll be one for the Lenneth banner, 
There'll be one for the Freya banner and there'll be one for the Ongrim banner. And it works just as the, what we saw with CG Citra. Step one, 500 lippies, one pull, 1.5 times rate for the five star. Step two, 1,000 lippies, two pulls, 5% trust Moogle. Step three, 1,500 lippies, four pulls, two times the five star rainbow rates. And step four, 3,000 lippies, six pulls, 10% trust Moogle. And for 5,000 lippies, you get your 11 pull with a five times rate increase. So, if you're wondering about whether you should be pulling on the regular banner or this, if you have the Lapis and you're really interested in these characters, step up banners are your best chance. Of course, remember, it doesn't mean you're guaranteed anything. Go watch my uh, probability class like that recap. So basically, um, I'm going to wait to sum up my thoughts on that just for a little bit. I don't think that's anything important, or at least nothing we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to talk about this instead, because we have hit 11 million downloads on the Japanese side. It's finally happened. Oh, thank God. Whatever. The important thing is, is that between January 22nd and February 22nd, you will get a one-time pull for 11, 1,100 lapis. And what that gets you, I have no idea. I literally have no idea what it means. Because there is a free 10 plus 1 pull, but there's also a one-time 1100 Lapis pull, which I don't know if it has any special rates or anything. We're just going to have to wait and see. At least, I've even checked Reddit. There doesn't seem to be anything extra about that. Okay, all right, whatever. And so lastly, let's talk about the maintenance period. So it's on January 22nd, which is a Monday here in Japan. Let me just double check that. Yes, I'm even right. Okay, now here's what's being added and what you should be afraid of. First of all, the maintenance will be five hour maintenance. Now we will be getting the Valkyrie Profile Kit Raid Collaboration added to the new units. We will also be getting Advanced and Expert Missions. Interesting. So basically we will be getting some kind of new missions with new rewards. And we'll have to wait and see what those are, but hey, that's exciting. Possibly free, easy stuff to get. Possibly more lapis. I'll take it. And lastly, and this is really, really important, is the Limit Burst EXP requirement will not change anymore with Rarity. And this is for all previous units as well as any new units. Basically, currently right now, let's just go and demo something really, really fast. Let's say I have Eileen. And I want to increase her limit burst. Well, as we all know, as you go up to her six star, it takes more limit burst pots. As you go up to the seven star, it takes even more limit burst pots. Not just because of levels, but because the EXP requirement goes through the roof. Well, guess what? Now there will be no increase in limit burst pots needed between rarities. You can take your unit straight up to a seven star and not have to worry about um, leveling them first for limit burst. Thank you, Alum. Oh my god, this is just a fantastic quality of life update. They'll also be sending us, though, Alum will be sending out limit burst pots at, or, well, actually, it just says a set of burst pots as compensation. That's nice of them. Let's hope they're king pots and not lower quality pots. Pots, 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 pots. Anyway, rank, leveling up your limit burst will now be much easier going forward. And thank God, because it has been a nightmare leading up until now. Basically, handcuffing you 
and saying that, no, nope, you can't make it a seven star till you finish that limit burst. Well, now you can. And last but not least, we're gonna do just that free poll. It's our last one, I think. This is our last day of this. And it's a blue. So according to that, the Valkyria profile one will be terrible. It will be a awful raid. It will be the worst raid you've ever seen. I don't know that. I'm just making stuff up so I have things to talk about. But yes, yeah, so how I'm going to end this video really, really quickly here, because I would like to go do some other things. So close to that 5k for the CG Citra. I'm going to talk about this banner in general. What do I really think about this banner? Well, first of all, if you're a Valkyria profile fan, you, you've stopped listening to me a while ago, and you're probably buying some Lapis so that you can get all of these wonderful units. Well, first of all, I think Leneth is so far a disappointment. She might be the strongest unit, but I think her TMR and Super TMR are just bad. They're just bad. I don't know who they're for, and I could be wrong. Maybe there's a unit out there who could really use them, but... Eh? Guess we'll have to see what her kit is like, really. Freya... Freya is really exciting for mages, and I can foresee myself doing a couple of possibly a step up for her because her TMR is great and her super TMR is just bananas for mages. It's actually incredibly bananas for CG Citra. And Arngrim or Arngrim is just the most exciting of the units for me because that guy is built for CG Hayu. He is the missing part and CG Hayu is so everywhere right now. Getting Arngrim's Ar Super TMR would be very valuable. Very, very valuable. And there is one other thing. You have a good chance of getting multiples of him. Or at least a 7 star. And as we know, Super TMR Margle Moogles? Margles? What's a Margle? Will be eventually added to the game, which means you can get his Super TMR. So long as you have two of him, that's really what you need. So in general, I'm actually pretty excited for the Valkyrie profile. Maybe not necessarily for the units, but definitely for their TMRs. And we'll just have to wait and see how good they are until the data mine on Monday. But you can expect that video in a banner review. But probably not any pulls at the start because I'm foreseeing myself doing a hard pass on Lenneth. And just waiting for Freya and Ongrim, who's just... Damn. Damn! So that's it for all... That's all for now. And I will see you all in the next video, when we will be taking a closer look at all of those units. Till then, folks, have a good one. And if you're buying Lapis, remember, you have to spend real money. <laughs>